Welcome back to She Can, where women lead by example. And why is it so important to be a role model or mentor to others? Because it's easier to be what you can see. Welcome, Eva Yazari, to She Can. You're a managing partner at Beyond Capital Ventures, a woman-led impact firm, venture firm, offering a diversified portfolio of companies in need-to-have sectors led by conscious leaders. You're also the CEO of Beyond Capital Fund, an early stage investment fund that improves lives. You are the author of The Good Your Money Can Do. You're also a podcast host at Beyond Capital. You're the founder of the Conscious Investor magazine. So you are a really seasoned investor, author and entrepreneur that brings key business skills, meaning, purpose and consciousness to the things you do. Now, we would love for you to tell us, first of all, a little bit more about your journey and how you found yourself um, at this point where you have an enormous amount of um, purpose and impact and impact investing. Thank you, Stephanie. It's a pleasure to be with you today and to lean into this discussion um, when it's actually become way more important than ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, uh, I am privileged to run a venture capital fund that does have meaning and purpose. I uh, didn't start out out that, out that way. I actually wanted to become a medical doctor. And in college, I kind of took a right turn in some of the quantitative uh, requirements and became a mathematician, which led me to Wall Street. And when I worked on Wall Street, I had a very strong identity as an American with a family that uh, actually worked in American politics for uh, multiple decades, uh, as well as a family that had lived in Tanzania, um, but as, as Americans. And uh, um, I thought a lot about how I could use my skills how I could use the skills of due diligence, portfolio construction, awareness of relational investing, which is what we were practicing in the fund of hedge funds that I work for, where we we always had strong relationships with our portfolio companies and apply it to areas where they were under-recognized or under-served um, investment opportunities uh, and undervalued investment opportunities. And that was really exciting to me. Um, you know, I, 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 I started a team call this morning by saying that I think a lot about what it means to be American. And one of the things that I think is valuable about the way that I grew up as an American um, really is the ability to think entrepreneurially about problems and be creative. And um, so therefore, uh, because I did have a family history on the African continent, pivoted to becoming an emerging markets venture capitalist, um, and really, you know, also recognizing the fact that the language of finance and capital markets are, are not always developed uh, around the world. And there's an opportunity to become part of that and to use venture capital. And also we now have a debt fund. So um, use a private markets, multi-asset approach to really build capital markets and rewrite the playbook. And that's what I love. That's what I get up every single day, very early, excited to do. Um, that's what gives me fuel and purpose and meaning in the work that I do. Um, so that's how I came to being a managing partner. There are a number of other threads and, and one of them that is undeniable to potentially talk about today on this, uh, in this conversation is gender. Um, because it is a big part of what we do at Beyond Capital Ventures. Yeah, I'm very grateful for you, Eva, to be here today and to take up these conversations. And I feel this is exactly the way forward. If we lead with our stories, we lead by example, we build up role models and mentors and are able to enthuse younger generations, especially, but really women as a whole to take action going forwards and to unite. That's a way forward that gives me hope. Eva, so would you like to um, expand a little bit on exactly what you invest in? What type of impact are you looking for? What companies are you investing in? Sure. So we, in our flagship venture capital strategy, we invest in healthcare, financial services, and climate. And for us, climate is mobility and agriculture. Um, invest seed to series A plus a little bit later stage than your average VC. 
Um, and we invest in two of the top four emerging markets, um, deal flow originating in India, as well as out of our office in Nairobi in East Africa, but companies scale across, have scaled across 13 countries on the African continent. Um, so that's kind of the uh, intersection of where we invest globally. We are not a global fund. Again, we are experts in two markets. Um, on top of that, though, we are looking for companies that are providing access to need to haves mm -hmm. um, for rising consumer classes and growing consumer classes. We recognize that the, de that the demographic tailwinds of emerging markets are undeniable and also um, you know, require innovation um, to meet the needs of emerging consumers. These are not rural last mile. These are consumers living on roughly $15 a day or higher um, and aspirational consumers as well. And um, in doing so, um, we kind of have defined our market size to be about $6.3 trillion. And that is our total addressable market for this fund size, which is which is massive. This is a big opportunity. And this is why it's so exciting to implement this strategy. But one last element is that when we think about impact, we think about it a little bit differently than some funds because we have been doing this for over a dozen years. And the way that we think about impact is through the lens of conscious leadership. Other women that I look up to have called this the feminization of finance and thinking about you know what it looks like to be relational, be non-transactional, to be stakeholder aware, to be abundance mindset, to see possibility, to be creative in the work that we do with our founders. And that is 1 million percent how we operate as a venture fund. And that's why we are a venture capital fund that almost operates like private equity. And in operating like private equity, um, we're in a great place to be able to be more active, more hands-on, and also support our businesses in a way that goes above and beyond. And that's why we're called Beyond Capital. Eva, I love that. And I think that you really invest in the companies that you invest in, i.e. you do a lot of business development to help them grow and make sure that the investment you have taken up is really um, scaling and, and helping them scale. What would you say does it take for them to raise a seed capital round or a series A round. So what 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 do you feel those leaders, those entrepreneurs have um, that others might not and why you invested in them? Well, a lot of times um, we do kind of compare across sectors. So we are looking for business models that are probably more so simple solutions to complex problems and not the other way around. I think that's an easy way way to say what we're looking for in a business model. But of course, there's much more than that. Um, our due diligence is no different than any other venture capital fund. Um, we are looking mostly for companies post-revenue, mostly for businesses that have uh, elements of product market fit, um, companies that have a, a sound scaling plan, have a business plan which is well thought through um, and unit economics that add up to profitability over time. Um, so those are maybe just a couple things that we look for. We also like to look for strategics on the cap table or potential for strategics to be on the cap table because that helps us with our exit routes um, or even just as partners in the business. Um, what does it take for a company to raise seed capital? I, I think it just takes an awareness of, you know, what a, 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 of professionalism um, and the ability for a business to come to a place where they can present themselves as, as professional. And at the same time, what that comes along with is understanding what the future looks like as a founder. I think a lot of founders are stuck in the now. And what we want to, to show us is that they really do see where this is going and have thought it through, even if they haven't executed on that strategy. So we do actually assess for conscious leadership and that is not only stakeholder awareness, it's are you acting above the or below the line, but in this whole process of due diligence, we get to know the people that we are investing in, and that is how we hold ourselves to account as relational investors. Eva, what do you feel is your role as a woman investor, a woman who has the power to write checks, and how do you feel 
as a woman in that industry that is still very male dominated, where women um, entrepreneurs get only about 2% of the pie, which is, is, is a tiny amount. How do you look at it and how do you feel you can make a difference? So I've studied a lot of different philosophies in my life. Um, born a Catholic, raised, uh, raised, raised Catholic, you studied Vedic philosophy, um, kind of, you know, as well, um, Hinduism, almost went to divinity school. And I start with religion here because I think mindset and philosophy really matters, um, particularly when you're swimming up stream. Um, I, you know, spend a lot of time in the stoicism world these days. And at the end of the day, the goal of a stoic is to always be good, no matter what is happening around them. And so that is my goal. And my goal in writing my book was to change the way people think about their money. My goal with, with our venture capital fund is to hit the ball out of the park with the returns, but bring people along on a journey that acknowledges that investing can look differently and still produce results. And we are not you know, trying to prove a point. Yeah. We are not building case, we are simply tweaking the model in ways that works to our advantage. And one of them is the relational approach. And I've said this before, what that means is that we don't just give, and again, I worked on Wall Street. I know this really well. We don't just give founders the money and say, I give you the money and you do what I say. And you smile and you kind of get it done and everybody's happy. This is much more than that. This is, I give you the money and I ask you, how can I support you? Where can we lean in? Where can we give you resource that you don't have it and we potentially have it? And how can I take things off your plate? And then finally, how can how can we be partners? So we are giving a percentage of the profit share of our fund to every founder in the portfolio as well. So how can we make you an owner? When I zoom out, to think a little bit more about what it means to be a female VC. I think what that means is just thinking about investment from a relational angle and, and understanding that even if that seems like a long game, because you're not being extractive, it's harder to get the value out when you're not being extractive, it seems. But I can tell you that if you were to reference check us with every one of the founders in our portfolio, they would say that they, that we are preferred on their cap table. So this secret sauce really works and we're playing the long game. And in showing that, I know we will win. I know we will build something much bigger than ourselves and bringing not only investors along on this journey, because we do have a majority of females and people of color as our investors and then everybody else who, who, who understands um, this relational approach really works, but also bringing the team along on this journey and creating a new type of investment professional that thinks differently about the work that they do is very important to me as a female leader. And then finally, not being afraid to talk about some of the things that in business are perceived to not be okay. So emotions are fine. They're normal. We're all human. And to be honest, we're in the business of listening to our founders and male or female, all of our team members have been therapists at one point <laughs> during this journey. And we acknowledge that that's a really important part of what we do. And when we acknowledge that publicly, I think it just opens up a conversation and an awareness that VC doesn't just have to be, you know, money exchanging hands and then, you know, growing a business and exiting and, and nothing more than that. It can be almost like a, a mindset and a, and a different way of doing business. Eva, mic drop. <clears throat> Everything you said is <laughs> just so great. And actually, you're talking about your purpose and impact investing. And you could say the same thing for today, this day that we find ourselves in as women from around the world. Waking up to these news, give us a little bit your feelings of when you read the news this morning um in relationship to to what you just said which i feel was so applicable to really um you know everyday life that we find ourselves in and how we have to reframe that and how we have to find 
ways to continue and to to bridge the the huge divide that we find ourselves in. Yeah. Well, number one, I, I think a lot of us knew that this was going to happen. Um, and and the reason I knew it was going to happen is because I don't believe that most of the world believes in the value of women. Um, and I think that that's, that's a belief that is not reactionary. It's one I've held for a really long time. Um, I just have the advantage of having gone to 13 years of all female education and being educated in an environment where I see women succeeding. So none of that is going to stop me. Um, what it, what worries me is, you know, the women who haven't, who don't have that privilege, whether it's their education or their socioeconomic status and will be impacted by, you know, the fact that their bodies are not their own. Um, I think these, these things are really serious. And the one thing I do as a female leader is not be afraid to talk about them yeah. because at the end of the day, this is not a political issue. This is a human rights issue. I feel that way about Black Lives Matter in my country. This is not a political issue. This is a human rights issue. And therefore, we when, when elevating this discussion to something that is so is is so much more than who's in the White House, that's I think where the change can actually happen. But I don't think the change is convincing other people. And I did move recently from a red state to a blue state. And I, I do have some very unfortunate views around mindsets, where people are getting their information. I, I can't tackle that. As a stoic, the only thing I can do is set an example and be good myself. And so my example is to help, is to you know be the leader that I am, be the, the bold leader that I am, broach conversations that others are not willing to, invest in women disproportionately in my fund, because that's what we do. Our impact is di always been disproportionately on women. Invest in female founders, invest in, in native born founders and people of color, which is um, the majority of women and people of color make up also the majority of the people that we invest in. And then create mechanisms to acknowledge that gender matters. So one of them in giving the profit share of our fund is having a gender bonus in place. So founders earn two times the amount of carry if they meet specific gender milestones around equal pay in the workplace, which is pretty much table stakes. But you know these things matter in terms of policy over time. Um, women on cap tables, women on boards, um, and then women in senior management positions. And our portfolio consistently punches above it, its weight when it comes to women in leadership positions. Um, so we are using the tool of capitalism, which, you know, is a very American thing to do. And again, I'm very proud to be an American. And that is an important part of the work that we do at Beyond Capital. Um, but using that tool of capitalism to create change. The other thing is, the other side of this coin is allowing for our, our investors who are majority women to get rich. Let's yeah. do this. Yeah. We have to stop. And I, I am guilty of this myself. Got married at the age of 24 um, to somebody 12 years older than me. Amazing ally in gender smart investing, in feminism. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better partner to elevate me, but I held myself back. I did it because even with my 13 years of female education, I was never fully allowed in myself to take things to the next level. And here we are 2024. And um, yes, I had a 50% sleep score last night, so didn't sleep very well. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think I'm just focused on leaning into where I can have impact and where I can have impact is elevating the women around me to be the best version of themselves. Eva, everything you say uh, I re resonates deeply and I'm so grateful for you to say all of this and to lead with this. Um, tell us a little bit more about your book. What good can our money do? What good can everybody's money do? This is the beautiful part is, you know, money is, wealth is not just money. And I actually had this conversation with my five-year-old daughter two days ago, where she said, Let, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to do this. And I said, we're already rich. And it may not just be money. 
it's, it's everything we have around us. And she said, no, 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 it's just money. And I always started to have this conversation about how wealth is more than money. And it is, it's, it's the art of living, you know, it's the ability to live well. And, and, and that is a feeling that is not what's in your bank account. And I, I feel lucky to be in this position on this day, because it gives me a lot of of calm in my nervous system that things are going to be okay because we all have tools and the tools that we have are voice vote we tried our best um what's in our where our money sleeping at night the bank account where we're making our consumer choices that's yeah, a great one important. yeah right and so and then also our advocacy and i can tell you that we don't know what the future is going to look like in terms of an authoritarian government, well, severely one party system right now, but the American spirit's not gone. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, That is true. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that we do have a lot of tools at our disposal. So the, the most important message of my book is to look at all the tools that you have today, tomorrow, next year, the year after that, for the next decade, for the next five decades, and use them to express your values and the way that you want to do good. Yeah. And that will, it has a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect in your energy. It has a ripple effect in how you feel every single day waking up. And people will notice. They will catch on. And that is important. Um, you will build community around you. And moments like this, may seem, I don't want to say less significant because this is very significant, but they may seem a little bit easier to navigate. Yeah, And sure. I think that's what we're all looking for. Yeah, for sure. Eva, give us some top tips for women entrepreneurs in your markets looking for funding. What would you tell them? Well, any female entrepreneur should adopt an abundance mindset. I think we're, we've been subliminally beaten into submission um, when it comes to what our potential is. And my potential is limitless. And I've worked hard to get here. And I want other women coming out of the gate to not make the same mistakes that I do, to not sit in a room with a financial advisor who looks only at my husband to not sit in another room with a female financial advisor who only talks about my husband's wealth potential. Mm -hmm. This is our time to really take action, but the action is inside ourselves. It comes from a place of deep belief of possibility. And it comes from a question of how willing, how good are you willing to let this get? That's my advice. I mean, of course, show up prepared to a meeting. <laughs> is another good one. But I think that's the uh, table stakes at this point for founders raising money. Yeah. Eva, so what would you say are you most proud of today? You do an enormous amount. What is it that you really think uh, that matters to me and I want to matter like this in the world? I'm really proud of the people that we invest in um, and the businesses that they've created. I ha lean more creative. I'm the daughter of two artists. I can do all the Excel stuff that needs to be done. We have a very, very rigorous due diligence process, but I'm very relational and very person oriented. And the people that we've invested in are top notch human beings, creating solutions that will change the world and will shape the future of global growth. And that's given me so much energy. The future of our planet is in partially in the hands of my portfolio. I mean, it's a small slice, but that's that's just what I'm really proud of is the, the people on the team, the people that have invested in us and the people that we invest in, it all comes together to create a beautiful community. And uh, it's a nice one to think about on a day like today. 
Definitely. Eva, so what are your plans and goals for the next years? Where is the journey of Beyond Capital going? What, what does the next sort of three to five years look like for you? We are raising assets. Uh, that's what we do as an investor. Um, we bring in money, we invest it, and we support our investors' access to this future of the global economy. Um, so we will be continuing to do that over the next five to 10 years um, on a journey where we we really start to unlock impact on a billion individuals, but also have top quintile venture returns. Um, so you'll see that. You might see another book in me. Um, uh, centered around what it's like to be an emerging markets investor, um, as well as uh, the theme of an emerging fund manager, um, and some themes around being a female fund manager in this environment as well. Um, but other than that, stay stay in touch on Instagram. I'm on Conscious Investor. I'm, of course, on LinkedIn. If you want to deep dive into what it means to be a conscious investor, um, we've got a lot of resources out there, and we will continue to put them out because we also know that creating a community around our work is very important and we are committed to that. Eva, what do you want people to take away from your story? I would love for everybody to spend 10 minutes today looking around their room or their bank account or their computer and think, is this really in line with my values? And even if it seems tokenist to take something out of your portfolio or to decide that you're not going to use a product any longer um, because it's not consistent with your values. It is not. Your brain connects to the habits and the small steps that add up to something bigger. It is, you do not need to take drastic measures and starting today will have a big impact on where you want to impact change. And it will also help you not lose hope. So that is, that's my, uh, my ask for the day is take action. Eva, I'm so unbelievably grateful for this incredible conversation that was inspiring each word you said for showing us that you can be an impact investor, you can be a mathematician, highly educated, showing collaboration and allyship is so important to have really big visions, to have a growth mindset and for leaning in to these conversations and many more to find solutions because we can really only find solutions if we lean into the difficult conversations and figure out the truths. So thank you for being here today with me. Thank you for having me. It was a really great conversation. Thank you everyone for listening. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy our conversations and we'll see you again tomorrow with another amazingly inspiring woman.